Hi, I'm Emily, and I want to share with you the most exciting experience of my life, my trip to London. I'd always heard about London with its famous landmarks like the Big Ben, the Tower Bridge, and the bustling streets of Piccadilly Circus. But seeing it with my own eyes was something I had been dreaming about for years. Finally, after months of saving and planning, I boarded a plane from New York and set off for London. The flight was long, but I was too excited to sleep. When the plane began its descent and I caught my first glimpse of the city from the window, I could hardly believe it. There it was, the River Thames snaking through the city, the London Eye standing tall on its banks, and countless historic buildings that I recognized immediately. As soon as I landed, I felt a rush of excitement. The cool breeze, the gray skies, and the sound of British accents all around me made it feel like I was stepping into a different world. I quickly collected my luggage and headed out to catch a taxi to my hotel in central London. Day 1. Exploring the Heart of London My first stop was Buckingham Palace. I arrived just in time to witness the changing of the guard. The ceremony was fascinating, with the guards in their red uniforms and tall, bare-skin hats marching in perfect unison. The palace itself was magnificent, with its grand architecture and regal aura. I couldn't help but imagine what life might be like inside those walls. Next, I made my way to Westminster Abbey. The abbey was even more impressive in person than in pictures. The soaring ceilings, the intricate stained glass windows, and the sense of history all around me were overwhelming. I spent hours wandering through the abbey, marveling at the tombs of kings and queens, poets and statesmen. It felt surreal to stand in a place where so many important events had taken place over the centuries. After Westminster Abbey, I walked over to the Houses of Parliament and the iconic Big Ben. Unfortunately, Big Ben was under renovation, so it was covered in scaffolding, but that didn't take away from the awe I felt standing there. I crossed the Westminster Bridge, taking in the view of the Thames and the London Eye in the distance. As the day wore on, I found myself at Trafalgar Square. The square was bustling with people, street performers, and the sound of laughter. I climbed the steps to the National Gallery, where I spent the rest of the afternoon admiring works by some of the greatest artists in history. It was a humbling experience to see paintings by Van Gogh, Monet, and Rembrandt up close. Day 2. A Walk Through History The next day, I decided to explore the Tower of London. This ancient fortress, with its thick stone walls and imposing towers, was a stark contrast to the modern city that surrounded it. As I entered through the gates, I could almost feel the weight of the centuries of history that had unfolded within those walls. I joined a guided tour led by one of the yeoman warders, also known as Beefeaters. The guide was full of fascinating stories about the tower's past, from its origins as a royal palace to its grim history as a prison and place of execution. I even got to see the crown jewels, which were more dazzling than I had imagined. After the Tower of London, I walked across the Tower Bridge. The views from the bridge were breathtaking, with the river below and the city stretching out on both sides. I could see the Shard, London's tallest building, piercing the sky in the distance. I spent the rest of the day wandering through the streets of London, discovering hidden gems like cozy little bookshops, historic pubs, and charming cafes. Every corner I turned seemed to reveal something new and interesting. I made sure to stop by the Borough Market, where I indulged in some delicious street food and soaked in the lively atmosphere. Day 3. Modern London and Beyond On my third day, I decided to explore the more modern side of London. I started my day with a ride on the London Eye. As the giant Ferris wheel slowly lifted me into the sky, I was treated to panoramic views of the city. From up there, I could see everything. The sprawling parks, the winding streets, and the iconic landmarks that I had visited the previous days. 
After the London Eye, I headed to the Tate Modern, a museum housed in a former power station. The Tate Modern was a stark contrast to the National Gallery, with its contemporary art and industrial setting. I spent hours exploring the galleries, getting lost in the thought-provoking installations and modern masterpieces. In the afternoon, I took a short trip to Greenwich. I visited the Royal Observatory, where I stood on the Prime Meridian, the line that divides the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. The view from Greenwich Park was stunning, with the Thames curving gracefully through the city and the Canary Wharf skyline in the distance. As the sun began to set, I returned to central London for one last adventure, a West End show. I had managed to get tickets to a musical, and it was the perfect way to end my trip. The energy of the performance, the dazzling lights of the theater, and the joy of the audience made it an unforgettable experience. Conclusion A City Like No Other My trip to London was everything I had hoped for and more. The city's rich history, vibrant culture, and welcoming atmosphere made it a place I'll never forget. I left with my heart full of memories and a promise to myself that I would return one day. As the plane took off from Heathrow Airport and I watched London disappear beneath the clouds, I knew that this was just the beginning of my love affair with this incredible city.